Hey everybody, Pastor Josh here, and uh, I just want to uh, invite you to consider uh, covenant membership at Redeeming Grace Church. Um, before I explain a little bit of what that looks like, let me just say, first of all, thank you for considering joining Redeeming Grace Church. Of all the churches that are out there that you could uh, be a part of and invest some time in getting to know and plant your family in, um, I am just really honored that you are drawn to the, the mission and the message, the culture and the people of Redeeming Grace Church. And so thank you for doing that. And, and I would just encourage you uh, to come all the way in via Covenant Church membership into the entire life of the church. Um, so the reason why we make um, Covenant Church membership such a big deal and why we are going to co constantly relentlessly call people to that level of commitment is because we believe the Bible teaches it. Um, I think that church membership is presumed on nearly every page of the New Testament. Um, I think that the vast majority of the commands and instructions in the New Testament are um, impossible to obey fully apart from being part of a covenant commitment to a local church. Just firmly convinced of that and that Jesus actually directly commands that um, in various places, but particularly in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, which is the Great Commission, where he says, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. So we, if we consider ourselves followers of Jesus, need to obey what Jesus commands. And I don't think we can obey the Great Commission apart from the local church. I think the local church and a covenant commitment to that is what makes the Great Commission possible. It is God's plan A for our growth in Him in becoming disciples ourselves. And it is the mechanism by which we make more disciples in a healthy way. And so... We take Covenant Church membership seriously because we take discipleship and missions and the commands of Jesus very seriously. And so it is our and the Bible's and 2,000 years of church history's way of understanding how to be a Christian um, and how to be Christians together in obedience to Jesus. So what's interesting is that if you then jump from Matthew 28 to Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit comes and the first church is born, you'll notice that they're marked by professions of faith, followed by believer's baptism, and then being added to a number, which is a membership role, is the way we would say it to get today. And then immediately the very next verse says that they devoted themselves, which looks like formal church commitment. It's a, it's a formal joining together. And then they're, they're um, assembled around the apostles' teaching, the breaking of bread, the fellowship and prayers, which is, um, matches almost exactly with Jesus' command to teach them all, teach them to obey all that I've commanded you and lo, I'm with you always to the end of the age. And so if you put those two together, and then the fact that the rest of the New Testament, almost without exception, is focused on relationships within the local church and written to churches, um, it's just very clear that formal commitment to a local church is essential to the Christian life. And so therefore, we love you uh, when we call you to be a covenant church member. And it would be unloving to not call you uh, to step into um, as, as clearly defined obedience to Jesus as we can muster. And so um, I would gently encourage you uh, to consider engaging the process of becoming a covenant church member at Redeeming Grace Church. The way the process works is that I will email you, and you probably are receiving this video via email. Um, I will email you two uh, documents. One is what we hand out at our Next Steps lunch, and it just lays out a little bit of a breakdown of how to get engaged in our church, and particularly how we see formal church membership, the portions uh, that we ask for, where we see those in the Great Commission in Acts chapter 2 that I just described. So I'd encourage you to really think through and meditate on that. And, uh, and see if you can't see what we see in the scriptures, uh, that this is what Jesus commands. And then also, the Membership Matters packet is also included. And I would ask you to read through that and to just look at uh, what, we, what the Membership Matters packet is all about. And what it is, 
is it's just a summary of what we believe our church should be about. And so it, it has a section, it has six different sections and, uh, and a bunch of little articles in it. And what it does is it outlines the gospel. It outlines how we see church membership. It outlines what we understand Jesus is teaching to be, which we call a statement of faith. It outlines um, uh, a church covenant that we ask everyone to agree to, which we understand that to be the obedience side of the commands. And so, um, and, and then it talks about uh, eldership, life together, community, about giving and church discipline and all those kinds of things. Um, and it's because we take Jesus seriously that we want to explain very carefully how we intend to obey Jesus together. And we put that in writing because we mean it. And uh, people's souls uh, will go on forever. And so we take the care of each individual soul, the shepherding of each individual soul, the salvation of every single soul, um, very, very seriously. I'm, I'm afraid that sometimes we take our Sam's Club membership more seriously than we take our membership in the body of Christ. And this is our attempt to be very serious about the Great Commission. So look those over and read those through and then mark them up and see if there aren't some places where you might have questions. And then if you're interested in pursuing more, joining this kind of church as defined in this document, um, then go ahead and let me know if you're ready to move to step two. After reading that step two, we then meet and walk through the packet again together. And I answer any questions or give any uh, additional information that might be helpful on any particular point of doctrine, culture, uh, how we structure our church, how we go about missions and evangelism, just whatever it is. Um, we want to be an open book to you. Um, and then after coming out of that, if you're ready to pr proceed to step number three, then we get together again and I hear your testimony. Essentially, I ask you some questions. And uh, basically those questions are uh, asking you as best as you can to explain the gospel. We want to make sure that people, um, if the, people aren't believers unless they've responded to the gospel and we can't respond to the gospel unless we know it. And so I just want to make sure you have a good grasp of the gospel. And then next, I want to know how you came to believe in that gospel, how you came to be saved, converted, born again. And then I want to ask you if you have been baptized as a believer in obedience to Jesus. Uh, if you haven't, we would love to do that. Baptisms are my probably my favorite thing in all of pastoral ministry, so it would be my great honor. I actually kind of hope that maybe people haven't been baptized yet because I just take such joy in doing that. Um, and if you haven't, um, we would love to do that. We would love to just celebrate that with you, um, your obedience to Jesus, your identification with him and his church. Um, and then uh, and then I just ask a little bit about your church background, just to make sure there aren't some things um, that maybe we would need to work through or resolve um, prior to coming into our fellowship. So after that, then what happens is that at our next family meeting of the members of Redeeming Grace Church, which meet roughly about once a month, um, I then uh, present you to them and just said, this is a, a dear brother or sister in the Lord who qualifies for membership within our church. And, uh, and, uh, and I recommend that we receive them into our fellowship, which means all of a sudden that once someone is received by vote of the congregation, they now share in the protecting, the guarding, the fellowship of the, of the congregation. Uh, they share in the votes and the decision-making of the body and, um, and uh, they are fully integrated into the life of the church. And so, um, and then that's it. From there on, you, we just walk out as in accordance with our, our covenant and our statement of faith uh, together. So, um, so that's the process. It's meant to be very easy in the sense that anyone who is a true believer who wants to follow Jesus with us would find an easy path through. Um, we're not asking for anything the Bible doesn't ask for or at least uh, presume in the scriptures. Um, and, but if someone wants to come in and really do damage or hijack the mission of our church, that there's some ways to be able to prevent that from happening and protect the flock that God has given us charge over. And so, um, so again, step one is to look over these documents and then let me know if you're interested in proceeding to step number two. And it would be my great honor to, uh, to walk with you through this, to answer whatever questions you have, to get to know you better, and then for you to be a formal member of this flock um, um, in that really clear, defined, biblical way. So um, I hope this is helpful. Uh, this probably raises some questions for you, but I am happy to answer those. That's what I'm here for. 
And, uh, and I, I just pray that the Lord would lead you uh, to join with us in, uh, in this way. So God bless you. I love you. I'm grateful for you. Thanks for considering these things. And let's, uh, let's move forward together in following Jesus.